Yes. Good evening. It's great to see all of you here this evening. I will call this City Council meeting of April 2nd, 2024 to order. We acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the ancestral lands of the coastal, the Coast Salish people and pay our respect to those past and present. With that, we'll lead into the invocation and tonight our invocation will be led by Pastor Kevin Scott, who's joining us online. If everyone could please stand. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. May we never use your name frivolously or with any disrespect. May we realize that you are above all and over all things. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we always be striving to understand your will and not expect you to merely fit into ours. Give us today of our daily bread. Please keep us nourished physically, mentally, and spiritually as to our need. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father, may those in positions of power govern with fairness and thoughtfulness, the same fairness and thoughtfulness that you would. Do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Please send your Holy Spirit to continually remind us of our role and our need to serve you. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Remind us, Lord, that your kingdom can begin immediately within our own hearts and minds. Remind us that any power we may have was given to us by you. Remind us that you rule for eternity and that we can be a part of that. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you. Tonight's meeting is being streamlined, streamed live on YouTube and Facebook and will be broadcast on cable channel 10 HD 1090 following the meeting. Attendees are participating in person and via teleconference. Guests that are included in staff presentations will be excused at the conclusion of the agenda item as appropriate. At this time, I will call on our city clerk to take roll. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Heisen. Present. Council Member Stuckey. Present. Council Member Hoffmeyer. Present. Council Member Marshall. Present. Council Member Wigenstein. Present. Council Member Arms. Present. Mayor Council Member Wiesner has asked to be excused this evening. May I hear a motion to excuse Council Member Wiesner from this evening's meeting? Mayor Pro Tem. I move to excuse Council Member Wiesner from tonight's meeting. Second. I have a motion to excuse Council Member Wiesner from tonight's meeting by Mayor Pro Tem, seconded by Council Member Hoffmeyer. All in favor, raise your right hand. He is excused. Thank you very much. Moving on to approval of agenda, are there any suggested changes to the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved as presented. We will then move on to community presentations. And starting off tonight is our Oak Harbor Creative Arts Foundation presentation by Ms. Cynthia Mason. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you for letting us have some time. I'm very excited to be here to introduce uh, the Oak Harbor Creative Arts Foundation. This organization was created to fill an, an, an identified gap in the creative arts in Oak Harbor and on Whidbey Island. The intent from the beginning has been to unify, lend clarity, and partner with pre-existing like-minded organizations mapping out the current geographic and demographic potential for arts-related growth, both economic and otherwise. Creating a central, collaborative focus, giving voice to our community, and moving forward with the needs of our island. Whidbey Island is well known for being a hub for artists, amateur and professional, yet it lacks a state-of-the-art, large-scale space for performances, events, and makers. It was ultimately determined that there was a need for a 501c3 designation in order to achieve our mission. This was established in 2021. Since then, we've been working behind the scenes to create a solid foundation and move forward with our initiatives. 
I have most of our board members in the room tonight to participate in our introduction to you all and to our community. Again, myself is Cynthia Mason, Vice President Larry Mason, Secretary Lisa Sanchez, Treasurer Ronnie Wright, Tiffany Scribner Director Lynn Goble, Anna Edwards, New Select Samantha Horobin, and Greg Goble Directors. Ms. Lisa? I don't, do we click? We click. We click. There you go. We'll click. Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm a proud local, Whidbey Island, born and raised. Oak Harbor has evolved into such a rich, diverse community over the years, and our mission is to create space and opportunities to learn and share with each other, fostering growth and creative expression. We see the future of Oak Harbor as a thriving holistic arts district, uniting creative people with artistic spaces and year-round opportunities to promote discovery, economic growth, for the overall well-being of our beloved community. I'm honored to be serving on this board and to share our goals for the future. The future of Oak Harbor is the Oak Harbor Creative Arts Foundation, building an environment that ensures access to the arts while partnering and collaborating with the community. Arts activity creates thousands of direct and indirect jobs and generates billions in government and business revenues. The arts also make our cities destinations for tourists, help attract and retain businesses, and play an important role in the economic revitalization of cities and the vibrancy of our neighborhoods. 80% of arts and cultural event attendees believe that the event they were attending inspires a sense of pride in the neighborhood and community. Patrons enjoy and contribute to community businesses by dining out at restaurants, enjoying dessert or a drink after the actual arts event itself. Hello, um, I'm Anna Edwards and I'm the music director for the Saratoga Orchestra, which is here on Whidbey Island. And this is obviously something that we are very interested in um, for the community. Um, as we look towards uh, our community going to events, as you can see here, the average attendee for an arts um, event is about $38 per person when they go to any kind of arts event. And one of the beautiful things is that if people come in from out of time, this amount doubles. So that m those uh, dollars translate directly into our community. Additionally, you know, engaging in the personal well-being of the arts, um, uh, we have seen that the arts uh, have shown to decrease um, cognitive impairment as people get old, uh, older, and it also at the same time increases the important cognitive development of our students. So for us, this is a win-win-win solution for our community. Oh, sorry. Um, the arts, <laughs> as I say, win-win-win. The arts make every uh, phase of life better and more fulfilling. Uh, learning through the arts has proven uh, to have benefits for participants in all stages of life. Uh, children, teens, adults, and seniors all gain from participation, and the whole community is positively impacted by the arts. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I just have it. Oh, I think so. Hi there, I'm Tiffany Scribner, and I am the chair of the Makerspace uh, initiative that is part of what the o Oak Harbor Creative Arts Foundation is focused on. <clears throat> Makerspaces are hubs for innovation, creativity, collaboration, and community. And as you've heard from all of our other fabulous board members, there's lots of reasons why uh, the arts are important to communities. Washington State has over 30 maker spaces, and none of them are within the easy drive of Oak Harbor or on the island. 
Um, maker spaces bring artists together and provide opportunity and education to create community and collaboration. And those are things that we are hoping to bring to Oak Harbor, and we feel we'll be able to uh, do that. We have a business plan in action for that, and we are working on a makerspace. We took some a trip down to the barn on uh, Bainbridge Island to get some good ideas and to see where we might start from there. But that is one of the things that we hope to bring forth in this community uh, with haste. So look forward to telling you more about that. Hmm, very good. Uh, my name is Larry Mason. Um, I've lived on Whidbey Island for over 50 years. Uh, matter of fact, I grew up right down the road, used to walk to Oak Harbor Elementary School and the junior high and the high school. And um, they were the good old days, but we need to move on. You know, we live in a beautiful, on a beautiful island, and uh, we have waterfront property here. Uh, the city of Oak Harbor is gorgeous, and I think it's deserving of a performing arts center. Um, we brought Stig Carlson in to do some preliminary drawings, which is something we'll do. But the uh, city of Oak Harbor, I think we have 24,000 people here. Island County, about 85,000. And so we looked at a couple of other performing arts centers locally, and um, the um, McIntyre Hall Performing Arts and Conference Center is uh, in Mount Vernon. I'm sure many of you have been there. They're celebrating 20 years right now. And Mount Vernon has about 35,000 people with Skagit, um, uh, Skagit County, 100, 130,000 people. And their Performing Arts Center is, has a capacity of about 700 people with a conference center that uh, can host 75 to uh, 300 people. And then the second one here is the Field Arts and Events Hall, opened in 2023 in Port Angeles. And Port Angeles has about 20,000 people in it. And Kalama County is about 76,000 people. And their capacity for their performing arts center is 500, with uh, a conference room of maybe 20 to 300. But um, the Creative Art Foundation is looking at maybe a performing arts center. We'd love to have something with a water view to show off this beautiful city that we live in. Maybe 500 to 700 people with a, a conference room of about 300 people. Thank you. I click that one right there. Okay, thank you. My name is Lynn Goebel, and I've lived in Oak Harbor for now 34 years, and does the time go by quickly? I've seen a lot of wonderful things happen in our community when people come together and share a dream that that's, it's amazing what can happen. So I have the responsibility of talking about a feasibility study. Always when you start a project this large, the first thing you need to do is have a feasibility study. And so we are looking at what our first inaugural event is that we need to raise a 35K to have a feasibility study to help us identify potential donors, our stakeholders, um, our supporters, and any potential challenges that might come our way. And through the feasibility study, it allows you to gain your, your map, your things that you're gonna be able to go out to your community with. And so we're really excited about that. So that's gonna be the first thing on our to-do list is that we've got to raise this money so that we can see if we can have all of those things I hope that just inspired you to think, wow, what would Oak Harbor look like if we had a performing arts center and a makerspace and bringing our community together? Because we know the arts really make a difference for our community. And I think I see some people in the audience that are really excited about this possibility. So the next slide is just how do you how can you contribute? So we know that volunteers, you can look at our website, and if you're interested in volunteering or even making a donation now, you can do that. And we are excited to entertain, I think, any questions at this time. And But first of all, thanking all of you for giving us this opportunity to share about this new foundation for the community of Oak Harbor. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so I'm just going to turn off. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great, thank you very much for your presentation. Are there any questions from council members at this time for the Oak Harbor Creative Arts Foundation? Yes, council member Stuckey. I'm gonna throw this out for her. Whoa, I'm loud, but that's more than normal. Um, there's a lot of, there can be some overlap. I mean, we have an arts commission. We have some members on that arts commission. Uh, you know, uh, Cynthia, I know mayor, you obviously are the mayor and is also part of this organization. How do you see us kind of working together and not duplicating the same work? I mean, as we talk about a community center, for example, we haven't identified that as an indoor rec center. We're doing a feasibility to see what we want to do. So I love everything you're saying. I'm just making sure that we're not, are we doing more, to, can we do more together? And how do we work together to partner or are we duplicating work between what the city does and what you folks are trying to accomplish? Thank you for your question. Um, we certainly don't want to duplicate efforts. We see us collaborating to get the work done because we need all hands on deck for a project like this. Um, the event center in Port Angeles came in at about $40 million. Um, we know it's not going to happen tomorrow. We see a shovel in the dirt in the next eight to 10 years, we'd be pretty happy. We'd be pretty OLD by then, but um, <laughs> it'd make us really happy. It really will take all stakeholders. We talk about bringing stakeholders together to discuss um, ideas and um, processes and who has the talent to do what and get things accomplished. So I think it's gonna take everybody, Brian. So just, just so I'm clear, you're thinking your organization is looking at things on a big scale. Absolutely. Not so much, you know, what, little, what art pieces do we get? It's not competing with the Arts Commission, in other words. You're looking at the big picture, not individual, hey, let's get right. a piece of art here or something. No, and, and that's, I mean, the Arts Commission has its own mission um, led by the, the council and with the help of Brian Smith, who's done a great job, and we're excited about that. I'm speaking now with my Arts Commission hat on. Um, you have many hats. <laughs> um, with the proposal of our plan coming together, which will become part of your comprehensive plan, all of that plays into having that community advisory board at the table to discuss just that and we've had conver I've had conversations with Jake Marriott who was the lead on the idea for a rec center to make sure we what we were doing and understanding our mi our mission and our go forth and where we would overlap um, even throwing the idea out of could the rec center be part of a performing arts center and um, it was our our feeling after talking for a few hours that it really should be separate so we all all need each other's help to get things done fair enough appreciate it thank, thank you. you for what you do thank you councilmember stuckey yes councilmember hoffmeyer yeah. you huge thanks to the whole team for coming out i, I think i'll just call you uh, you guys uh cynthia's army i, I think that's fair <laughs> i know uh i think every one of us in this room would uh, take any hill with you so uh thanks uh thanks for all of you guys for coming out um th there is some overlap and uh you know a, a little over a year ago when uh several council members went down to olympia to the to the awc conference it was a uh, valentine's day night uh, where we were having dinner with rep paul and uh you know it was it was a conversation with him to where cynthia's name came up and and it was because of that conversation and that vision you had shared with him about a performing arts center somewhere in the downtown corridor to where he led with the idea of hey you guys should request this money and that was a 48 hour deadline to get that request in the city did that it was 623 or 628,000 it was loosely coded from the state just as economic development but there is overlap and there is a lot of deliver deliverables within this for the city of Oak Harbor and I don't see why a certain amount couldn't go towards that feasibility study so I guess that's a question for uh, staff and the rest of council to, to chew on and uh, you know maybe, maybe there's a way the city could help make a dent in that that money I would hope but anyway thank you everybody and this is very exciting thank you very much for that um, when we were establishing this group in 20 20 2020 <laughs> Lisa was part of our founding group um, 
the then Vice President Roderick and I approached um, Mayor Severns, uh, Commissioner Jill Johnson, and Representative Dave Paul uh, with our idea, um, looking not only for their support, but we also didn't want um, that level of representation of Oak Harbor and the island to find out about our initiatives by way of a social media post. So out of respect for them and all of your positions, that was the first thing we did. And we were in the COVID environment. So a lot of this happened by way of Zoom conferences. It's nice to see you all in, in public and announce this. Um, and yeah, it, it was gr he, great that uh, Representative Dave Paul pushed us to actually apply for some of that money a few years ago. There is a group in Stanwood that's a few steps ahead of us um, with their processes and uh, we reached out to them so we can kind of get a lessons learned meeting going forward on, on what they've been doing and what they could have done better. So we're reaching out all over to the arts community to learn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Hoffmeyer. Anyone else for the good of the order on this issue? Nothing. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. We are now going to move forward on the schedule and go into citizen comment period. Citizens may comment on consent agenda items or subjects of interest not listed on the agenda at this time. Citizens will have the opportunity to comment on the remaining agenda items during the meeting as appropriate. Citizens can also visit our website prior to our meetings for methods to submit public comment or contact the city clerk, Julie Nestor, by phone or email. When submitting comments, please include your name and address. Public comments sent anonymously will be shared with the mayor and council but will not be displayed. We received three new public comments since our last regular meeting. One from Rebecca White of Oak Harbor regarding the, state, the skate park. One from Kristen Stavros of Coopville regarding the Creative Arts Foundation and Arts and Events Center. And one from Bill Weinsheimer regarding the Creative Arts Foundation. All comments are displayed now. All right, uh, with that, are there any members of the public present who wish to speak on to items not listed on the agenda or on the consent agenda? Here Mayor, with uh -huh. we have three citizens that have signed up to speak. Okay. The first is Jeff Humphrey speaking in regard to food trucks. Okay. Good evening and thank you for allowing me to make this presentation. Thank you for each of what you do. You have a hard job. I would not want to do your job. Just thought I'd say that publicly. Thank you. We appreciate you. I would like to once again take the, uh, t like to visit the restrictions that have been placed on food traders and food trucks in the city of Oak Harbor. It is my understanding that a food trailer is only allowed to be at any one location for 60 days and then at that point has to move to a lo new location if they can find a new location. My concern is that the city of Oak Harbor has restricted viable and valuable businesses from conducting their, businesses, their business in Oak Harbor. I believe as our wonderful community continues to move forward and to grow, we need to be business friendly to existing businesses and to new businesses. And what this ordinance does, it actually says, you're not welcome in our community. Food trailers and food trucks are an important growing part of communities all around our state and our country. 
As many of you know, I own a sign company here in Oak Harbor, and over the past two to three years, I've had at least seven food traders and tr food truck vendors visit my shop for business purposes. And as we begin to talk about uh, the possibility of them coming to Oak Harbor, they have found out that, uh, that they're not allowed to conduct business except for 60 days inside of the city of Oak Harbor. And so, so those six to seven, or those seven food vendors have actually moved on and gone to other communities and other places outside of Oak Harbor and their businesses are thriving. It's the job of the city council to make Oak Harbor an inviting community to do commerce. This commerce benefits the citizens of our island, makes Oak Harbor a destination for shopping, for eating, for recreating, and for resting. When there is a we don't want you policy in place, businesses will go elsewhere and visitors will go elsewhere. Good, strong businesses not only provide better services to our citizens and, visit and, and our visitors, it also provides strong economic growth and taxes for our community to help offset our ever-increasing cost of doing the city stuff. Now, one of the ideas that I've heard is that it's been, it's been suggested that, oh, well, we'll help you. We'll move it up to 90 days and then you have to move. Um, well, can you imagine trying to own a business and have to move every 90 days? Council Member Stuckey, could you imagine telling your team to go grab the caskets and the bodies and to move every 90 days? I can't. And Council Member Hoffmeyer, where would you start building and start digging that new hole for the new pool every 90 days? I don't think it's, it's possible. And, and what about you, um, Council Member Marshall? Um, you, uh, you'd have to move your electronics, your, your, um, all the things that you have in your prospering business every 60 days and literally start all over again. Well, that's what you're requiring food trucks and, tr and food vendors to do. Although they're mobile, you may not realize this, but they, most of them use 220 volts and you just can't plug them in anywhere, you literally would have to put a brand new electrical system into a place that you lease or you rent, and that costs just three to $5,000 every 60 to 90 days. That's not sustainable. My son-in-law, Willie here, um, and my daughter, they have a food truck. It's about ready to be opened up. And the city of Oak Harbor is missing out on all the benefits of another amazing food option in the community. What we're asking is for you to please change your ordinances so that food traders and food trucks can operate permanently within the city limits of Oak Harbor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from council? Oh, no comments, sorry, Never mind. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Julie. Thank you, Mayor. Next is Kim Ford regarding the Volunteer Park softball fields. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to the board. I came before you last week with uh, my daughters regarding the status of the softball fields and their playability. And uh, I must say that uh, the softball players are very impressed with the swift um, action that has been taken to address the softball fields. Um, wanted to come before you to say thank you personally, uh, especially to you, Council Member Hoffmeyer, um, for coming out and visualizing the fields for yourself. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to have my daughters come before you um, to voice their concerns and for them to see um, civic action in progress. Um, the, it has been a wonderful opportunity for them to see that their voices are heard and they are valued members of the community. And while the status of these softball fields might not be a large item in the grand scheme of things, um, your efforts and especially uh, Director Brian Smith, um, I'm sure his crew uh, took on the brunt of the work that had been done. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for coming back and saying thank you. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Mayor, next on our list is Nolan Saltenstall, speaking in regards to the Community Rec Center. Hi there, everybody. My name is Nolan Saltonstall. Uh, there's a lot more people here than usual. I like to speak at these meetings. Um, for those of you who don't know, about two months ago, my group, the Mr. O'Carver, 
we came together to choose a service project for our year of rain, because we're royalty or whatever. And so we chose for our service project a community rec center, which is actually quite similar to the art center that you guys were all talking about. And it's pretty, we've made some pretty good progress. We have approved a feasibility study, or, well, we got funds for the feasibility study. It hasn't been approved or anything, but we got $200,000 from the state because they were in session last March, and that was pretty cool. And I think, I think the talk about an art center is really cool too because I'm a student of Mr. McCoy. He's in the stands. He's our choir teacher. Sorry, Mr. McCoy, I called you out. Um, but, you know, I'm a student. I love the arts. I like singing. I like doing artsy stuff. And our community could use something like that. And I don't see why the two couldn't be mutually exclusive. I mean, I'm not like a planner expert or anything, but like a community center and an arts, performing arts center, they could go well together. I don't, I think those two projects that are getting tossed around are really cool. I mean, I think it shows there's community support for both of them, and I like that. So um, I guess this is my time to advertise. We have a mod pizza date, April 11th. You all should go, say Mr. O'Carver, it's for money for our project. Um, been working on a petition to pass around. I don't have quite all the information I want to put into it yet, but it's going to be showing the support so council knows people want this. And all in all, I'm really excited. It's super cool to see a bunch of people here. Sometimes there's not. Um, but yeah, thank you, council. Thanks, Nolan. Mayor, that concludes those who had signed up to speak. Great. Are there any members of the public present who wish to speak who have not signed up? All right, hearing no one else who wishes to speak at this time, we will close the public comment period and we'll move on to our consent agenda. We will move to the consent agenda. Staff has presented the listed consent agenda items, all of which were included in the meeting packet and most of which are appointments to the city's boards and commissions. Thank you to all who applied to serve. Are there any objections or changes to the consent agenda as presented? Mayor. Yes. I, I believe Hillary's online here. Um, I believe the proper recourse is for me to recuse myself from voting or re recuse myself from voting or consenting on uh, item E. Okay. Thank you. So Councilmember Hoffmeyer is going to recuse himself from. I was going to say, you may have to move to amend and pull it off consent so that you can do that and then approve consent. All right, so can I get a motion? Yes, yes Mayor Pro Tem. Um, let's see, I move to pull consent item E. Second. All right, we have a motion to pull consent item E from the agenda. It was seconded by Council Member Wigenstein. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Perfect, all right, so we're all in agreement. So then removing consent item E, we're all in agreement then with the consent agenda as presented. All right, great. So the consent agenda is approved. Thank you very much. Mayor Pro Tem. I move to approve. Thank you. Consent item for E. Second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve consent item E. It's seconded by Councilmember Marshall. All in favor, raise your right hand. Everyone is in agreement. Thank you so much. Six voted yes, one abstention, and um, Councilmember Hofstar. Hopmeyer. So. All right, moving on to mayor's comments. <laughs> oh, you didn't vote? You didn't present the other option. Oh, what's the other option? Again. Again. Oh, are you against? I'm sorry. I thought you raised your hand. Well, I'm now sorry. you're calling me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you voted. Were you? I am standing by. I'm not going to go on along. I'm standing by my vote that we had last week. Nick, okay. So. We have four in favor, one against, and one abstention. I'm sorry. That was my fault. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Moving on to Mayor's comments. <laughs> Northeast 7th Avenue reconstruction. The city held a bid opening for the Northeast 7th Avenue project earlier today. Staff will update us on the results of the bid opening once they have determined the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Happy Spring from the Oak Harbor Gary Oak Society. Volunteers weeded and mulched the upper landscape beds in Smith Park this past Wednesday and shared photos with us. Boards and commissions. The city has a number of volunteer positions to fill on our Historic Preservation Board, Civil Service Board, and Salary Commissions Board, as well as our LTAC Board, and our Community and Police Advisory Board. See our website to apply. 
The city has openings for employment in several areas. See our website for a complete listing and how to apply. This month, we have several special meetings in addition to our regular council meetings on April 16th and our council workshop on April 24th. The city council will be holding two special council meetings in April. The first will be on April 10th at 2 p.m. here in council chambers. The purpose of that meeting is to discuss the council's overarching priorities and how they relate to our budget planning. Deputy City Administrator Goldman has sent budget information to the council in preparation for that meeting. The second special meeting is a joint meeting with the Island County Board of Commissioners on April 23rd at 1 p.m. The purpose of the special meeting is to review and discuss land use policies and regulations of mutual interest. That special meeting will be held at the Whidbey campus of Skagit Valley College, room A306. Both meetings are open to the public, but public comment will not be taken. Moving on to Mayor's first 100 days in office report. My 100th day in office is fast approaching and I am mindful every day of how the positive changes being made make for a better workplace and improve city operations and communication. To that end, I am pleased to announce that we are welcoming Maggie Aguilar to our administrative team as communications officer. Maggie is familiar to our community, having served the past two years as the executive director of the Greater Oak Harbor Chamber of Commerce. She will be joining us in May. Last month, I promoted Executive Services Administrator Sabrina Combs to interim city, interim city Administrator in light of her extensive knowledge of the city, our community, and her broad government and public sector experience. It is my distinct honor to seek council support of the first female person of color in the city administrator role. Now I will call upon council for any comments that they might have at this time. Councilmember Hoffmeyer. Yeah. Uh, uh, Valerie, Melinda, River, Rachel, Brian, Joshua, Evan, Louis, Stefania, Vicki, Kevin and Eddie, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart and uh, congratulations. It is uh, so encouraging to see people stepping forward to fill these roles. And uh, I know that uh, I know that our future uh, becomes brighter every day. So thank you, thank you very much. And uh, with regards to the uh, communications officer position being filled, um, good job, Mayor. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Council Member Hoffmeyer. Yes, Council Member Stuckey. Yeah, I don't know if there's someone from Development Services that could help with the, the food truck question. It was presented oh, probably a month, month and a half ago, and we talked about seeing about getting that taken care of. Has there been any progress in that regard? Yes. Anyone? Do you want to talk about it, Steve, or do you? I was just going to say that I know that they're working on it and they're planning on coming back to Council with more information, so it is in process that they're working on it. Do we have a Going to come. There we go. <laughs> Kakamak, principal planner. Uh, I know David Cool has got that on his list of things to do, and we talked about it. Um, so it's still something that we're working on. Uh, I will uh, pass on the information, and they can, we can get uh, some updates to you very soon. Thanks, Kak. And for the record, the, David Cool's on vacation right now. So, yeah. Just out of curiosity, to further put people on the spot, do you have a ballpark of when that might be anyone um, I mean I know we have a lot of things and being discussed but I didn't know if discussed mean a month I don't know if discussed means six months sometimes these things kind of set in queue a little bit so I didn't know if we had an idea at least yeah, of how far we, we're getting in the process we can get you an update as soon as the next council meeting at least where we are in the process Is, okay that be sufficient? thank you yeah Great, yeah, thank you. And I was just gonna add, yeah, we are, we are meeting weekly and talking about those things as well. So that is something that we will be talking about upon his return from vacation. So any other council comments at this time? All right, hearing none, we will move to public hearings and meetings. We have two public hearings this evening. <clears throat> the first being ordinance 1995 budget amendment number six to the 2023-2024 biennial budget. And to introduce this would be our deputy city administrator and finance director, David Goldman. Good evening, mayor, city council, David Goldman, deputy city administrator. Presentation is loading. So this item is the sixth budget amendment of the 2023-2024 biennial budget. 
Um, this budget amendment is to account for previously approved bargaining agreements, including one that was approved tonight, and a change in the non-represented health care and dental spouse family share to conform with those bargaining agreements. Um, there's four items on here. The first item is the Teamsters bargaining unit. There'll be a budget adjustment of $135,300. Um, the City Council approved the Teamsters Collective Bargaining Agreement in January of 2024. The next item is the Oak Harbor Police Association Bargaining Unit Agreement. That was approved in February and that will require a $263,000 adjustment. The next item is the International Association of Firefighters Bargaining Unit, which was approved earlier tonight. That will require a $90,200 adjustment and a $24,600 amendment. Now, as I say every time I make these um, presentations, an amendment is, is when you change the total amount of the appropriation in a fund, whereas an adjustment is just changing current appropriations. So for example, there's an ending fund balance appropriation and there's lines for salary and benefits. So when you see the word adjustment, all we're doing is taking out of the fund balance and moving it into the proper lines to pay our employees. Um, the final one there is the non-represented employees. That's about $48,400 of an adjustment. And that proposal is to adjust the employer, employee, medical and dental family and spouse cost share from the current 80%, 20%, where the city would pick up 80% and the employee he would pick up 20% to a 90% and 10% match. To, and that is to include um, what was previously approved in the bargaining agreements. This is an overview. It's also in your packet. It might be easier to read in your packet. But this is the budget adjustment overview. And you could see that we have the budgeted beginning fund balance in the second to left column per fund. You'll see the Teamsters Police Fire and the non-represented actions that we discussed a little bit earlier. And then you can see the ending budgeted fund balance for each fund as well. So the total impact is about $500,000 for amongst um, all the funds that are listed up there. And those funds comprise the general fund, the streets fund, the um, senior center fund, and um, all of our utility funds, and the marina fund, and a few of our um, internal service funds that um, contained public works employees. All right, with that, um, I would suggest we open up the um, meeting to the public for their comments, and then make um, a motion that you see on the screen. Great, thanks David. If you could please make sure you leave that motion on the screen for me too. So um, at this time I will open the public hearing and I will look to our city clerk to make sure that we've received no public comment on this ordinance. Mayor, we have received no public comment. All right, so at this time I would ask those present with us this evening if you would like to step up and speak on this matter at this time, this is the time to do so. <laughs> All right, confirming that there are no public comments and that there have been none received, I will now close the public hearing and move to council and call upon them for their questions and comments at this time. Yes, Council Member Hoffmeyer. Yeah, you know, uh, it, in my opinion, this budgetary amendment is, is fairly material. You know, I, I wished that, that maybe it had came to a workshop first. That's just a, you know, a constructive piece there. I. And this isn't intended to be a critical of staff at all. In, in fact, quite the opposite. I, I absolutely love our staff. Um, my time in government has certainly taught me not to not to presume that I know how a, a council is going to vote on something. So my only apprehension is with when there's an interim position out there, I hate to see that person's fallback position go away until that interim tag is removed. That's my only. That, that's my only criticism and apprehension of that. Um, I so, sometimes an interim person can become permanent, and sometimes they don't. And I just I, I hate seeing that fallback position go away before that other issue is dealt with. And I, I, I feel like if it had went through workshop, maybe maybe it would have been a better venue to ask some questions. Uh, that said, I'm only one vote, and it's probably not a sword worth falling on. So. 
I assume I probably will vote with the majority on this, but uh, it, it, it will be uh, a cautious support, I suppose. But thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Hoffmeyer. Anyone else that would like to speak on this matter before we go forward with calling for a vote? Yes, Councilmember Stuckey. Just a point of clarification to Councilmember Hoffmeyer's comments, because I have a similar thought. However, this budget amendment, if I understand, other than salaries and things like that. It has nothing to do with, this budget amendment has nothing to do with staffing levels, it has nothing to do with the city administrator or the interim, it has nothing to do with the communications. This, ha this approving this has nothing to do with that. Is that correct? Well, the ordinance includes Exhibit A, which is the salary and classification plan, and that is updated every budget amendment um, for the changes that have occurred since the previous budget amendment or the original budget was adopted. Um, there's no additional FTEs, no additional positions are created, but there are reclassifications and title changes for existing FTEs that are within um, the Exhibit A attachment to the ordinance. But as far as the dollar amounts and the, the meat of the budget amendment, um, it has nothing to do with interim positions or the communications position or anything like that. So approving this, we're also approving that other document with some of the reclassifications. Yeah, you're truing things up that have occurred since the last budget amendment until today, or until a few weeks ago when it was last updated by uh, the HR director. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Stuckey. Anyone else for the good of the order on this issue? Mayor Pro Tem. Sorry, Mayor, could we just take like a two minute timeout to Absolutely. Do some reading and thinking. Yes, so can we take before we move on? We'll take a seven minute recess. Oh that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Seven minute recess.
All right, we're going to call our meeting back to order, and with that, now I'm going to ask one last time to turn this over to Council for any questions or comments that they have on Ordinance 1995, the Budget Amendment Number 6 to the 2023-2024 biennial budget, and I will call on Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, just for the sake of transparency, I was I had some questions for our uh, financial director, and my suggestion to him was to have a, a red line side by side version of how things existed yesterday and how things will exist tomorrow if the changes are approved. That was just me expressing a personal preference in terms of how the packet is presented. Um, not, doesn't wasn't expressing an opinion about the content of the actual recommended action. So I just needed some clarification from him. So thank you, yep. um, Mayor, for letting me take a little think break. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for the question and the clarification. Anybody else that has questions or comments at this time? Yes, Councilmember Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to say that I don't have any issue with the, the reclassification. It seems to be something that we've done historically where we've changed the position just a little bit. And so, and, um, you know, I know this isn't what we're, we're talking about at the particular time, but I do support, you know, the staffing changes that, that we've made and, and uh, feel comfortable with, with moving this forward. So. Thank you very much. Yes, Councilmember Wigenstein. Um, just going to kind of mirror what uh, Councilmember Marshall said. Uh, historically, this looks pretty normal um, in the process of which we've done things from what I've been able to dig up. And I, too, support the changes. I think um, new, fresh blood is always exciting and rejuvenating, in, and it seems to be the least expensive process at this point in time to go down that road. And um, being fiduciary responsible to our constituents is a, is a must as well. So I'm in favor of that, too, as well. Thank you, sir. All right, with that, any other comments or questions at this time? Yes, Councilmember Wigginstein. Um, with this, I'll just make the motion to move to adopt ordinance number 1995, budget amendment number six, amending the 2023-2024 biannual, biannual budget, adopting an updated wage and salary schedule and plan of, plan of classification, and adjusting non-representative full-time employee dependent and family plan health and dental insurance cost shares. Second. All right, we have a motion as presented and was read it was seconded by Councilmember Marshall. All those in favor, or any other discussion at this point in time before we take a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. I got them all this time, six. So that approves unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. All right, moving on to the next item, Resolution 2408, authorizing the surplus and sale of real property, Northeast Goldie Street, Oak Harbor, Washington which constitutes 3.39 acres and bears assessor's parcel number R13326-009-2990. Introducing this it will be our economic development coordinator, Steve McCaslin. Good evening, Mayor, Council, thank you. So I won't repeat what was just said since it was already said, so that's good. We did discuss this back in the January workshop, so we're, there we go. So. You see all the stuff up to what wasn't said. There's almost 148,000 square feet, and you can see where it comes. Northeast 16th comes across in the southern border of the parcel that has the star in it uh, would be on the north side of uh, Northeast 16th if it, whenever it finally does go across. So it was purchased in 1938 for $65. So. 15 years ago in 2009, it was up for a resolution to be sold. Uh, it was declared surplus 19, uh, by resolution 1901, but for whatever reason that I've never been able to ascertain, the property was never sold for whatever. So recently, Public Works has <clears throat> made it where, or has evaluated it and said, there's no need for them at Public Works anymore. The staff has made the same recommendation. There's no other need for the city with the property. So. The idea here would be to adopt a new resolution just to make it all look good, make, to get rid of, to supersede uh, 0901, declare it surplus, and then do a sealed bid process at that point. We have received two offers in the past, about three and a half years ago, and then one last fall, both were declined. And the sale would include a 60-foot right-of-way through the southern 
portion of the boundary there for the extension of Northeast 16th to go through. So before we go to, this is the recommended motion for council and that's my presentation and then we can go to public comments now. Thank you, sir. So with that, I will open the public hearing and I will confirm with our city clerk that we received no public comment on this issue. That's correct, Mayor. No public comments were received. All right. And at this time, for those of us that are present tonight, if there are any public comments you would like to step forward and make at this time, I would like, uh, I welcome you to make those. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing and call upon council for their questions and comments. Council Member Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, I remember when we talked about this originally, we talked about having a minimum bid. Is, it, is there gonna be a minimum bid requirement? Um, and then my second question has to do with, wouldn't we change the zoning? Because said the original one said that it was to be used for affordable housing. And, and I just wanna specify, we can't build housing on that, right? Because it is north of 16th. That's correct, because it's in an industrial okay. zone. Okay, okay. thank you. And then, so the, do we have a minimum bid requirement on this? We do. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Council Member Marshall. Council Member Hoffmeyer, did you have a question? Okay, great. Council Member Stuckey. I thought you said 90 seconds. That was like two minute presentation. Did I go that long? Yeah, I'll get the timer next time. I was distracted by the thing in your pocket. <laughs> Anyways, I'll make the motion. <laughs> it's like I got a hamster in there, come on. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve resolution 24-08 declaring the Goldie Road property surplus and authorize the mayor to proceed with sale of the property through a sealed bid process. Second. All right, we have a motion as was presented. It was seconded by Council Member Wigenstein and I will now open it up for any additional comments or questions before we call for a vote. Hearing none, all those in favor raise your right hand passes unanimously so thank you very much thank you sir thank you have a great night everyone <laughs> moving on to ordinances and resolutions we have resolution 2410 washington state recreation and conservation office grant applications and here to introduce this topic is our grants administrator wendy horn uh, good evening mayor and council i'm wendy horn grants administrator i'm here with brandon cable who is our park supervisor to talk about the Washington State Recreation and Conservation Office grant programs, also referred to as the RCO. Um, the RCO is responsible for a wide variety of programs. They have four main areas that they're concerned with, recreation, conservation, salmon and orca recovery, and invasive species. They offer 25 different grant programs with a combination of funding from state and federal sources. <clears throat> so currently there's seven different grants available um, to apply for at this time. And as you've heard over the last couple of months from the Parks and Recreation Director, Brian Smith, the department is interested in several of these programs. So tonight I'm gonna to be talking about four different ones. Um, the Community Outdoor Athletic Facilities Program funds um, projects that improve access to outdoor athletic facilities. The Youth Athletic Facilities Program funds um, <clears throat> projects that either buy land or develop or renovate outdoor athletic facilities. The Land and Water, excuse me, Land and Water Conservation Fund is federal money that funds, again, purchase or improvement to parks, trails, wildlife lands, um, or other outdoor recreation opportunities. And then the last one, Washington Wildlife and Recreation Program, the Recreation Division, funds a broad range of projects from land protection to, again, outdoor recreation. So the first one I'm gonna talk about, <clears throat> the Outdoor Athletic, the Community Outdoor Athletic Facilities Program has a goal to improve meaningful access to athletic facilities for underserved communities and recreationists statewide. Um, the funding is going to be broken down into allotments around the state. So the North Sound, which is where Island, Count Island County Falls, will be distributing um, $4 million in two different um, 
two different rounds. And the Parks and Recreation Department would like to apply for $800,000 for the pickleball court construction. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing about this one, there's no match requirement. And um, it can actually be used for the next grant that I'm gonna be talking about as the match. Um, the other nice thing about this grant, it is weighted in favor of underserved communities. As you know, Oak Harbor falls into that category. Um, all of the grants have a deadline of May 1st. These, um, this one in particular is um, unique in that it will award the first half or $2 million for North Sound in October and then the second half in July of 2025. The next grant that I'm gonna talk about is the Youth Athletic Facilities or Fields Grant. Again, <clears throat> this is for the pickleball courts. Uh, we are gonna request $800,000 for this one as well. Since there is no guarantee in grant life, we thought we would ask for both and hopefully maybe get one. <laughs> um, however, this one does require a 40% match. And so again, if we were so fortunate to get the first one, we could use it as our match for this one. <clears throat> but if we weren't successful, we can use REIT funding, park impact fees, general fund, um, other sources. And this is also due on May 1st. The um, RCO will be putting out a preliminary ranked list in October. Um, so we'll have an idea of whether or not funding will be available to us. The next one, um, at the last workshop, council was presented with information regarding inclusive playgrounds and the possibility, possibility of um, Oak Harbor building one here. The Land and Water Conservation Fund, surprisingly, likes to fund playgrounds. Um, and I know, as Brian noted in his presentation last week, that um, he actually secured one of these um, grants for the last city that he worked for. Um, there's also several cities in Washington State that have received this funding for inclusive playgrounds in the past few years. So we will be asking for, if you approve, $700,000. Um, there is a 50% match requirement of which 10% has to be local funds. Um, and again, I'll just repeat what Brian said last week. Funding sources can come from fundraising, REIT, um, park impact fees, general fund. And again, May 1st deadline, October, is when we would hear whether or not we made the ranked list. And then last but not least, of course, is the Washington Wildlife and Recreation Program. 30% of this funding that's available is dedicated to park use. Um, the program provides funding, again, for a broad range of outdoor recreation opportunities, but typical projects do include ball field um, building and renovation projects. So we would like to request $300,000 um, for the Windjammer Little League um, ball fields, and that would be renovation of those. Um, there is a 40% match, and it could come from the Windjammer Park funds that are, is dedicated. Um, again, deadline is May 1st. We would know by October whether or not we made the rank list. And if we make the rank list, just as an FYI, with the exception of that first community outdoor fields, um, all of the funding would be available July 1, 2025. So it's a ways out, but um, we would know in October if we could start planning for that. So with that, um, Brandon is here to answer any questions specifically about the projects themselves. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the grant programs. Great. Thank you. Th thank you, Wendy. Um, I would confirm at this time that we received no public comments on this matter. That's correct, Mayor. No comments were received. All right. And at this time, I would like to request any additional public comments from those who are here with us this evening. All right. Hearing none, I will call upon Council for their questions and comments and Council Member Hoffmeyer. Yeah, you know, just again, you know, a huge kudos to staff. It's not, it's not lost on me that, you know, sometimes the, uh, sometimes these grants are only open for a couple of days or a couple of months that there are very, very tight windows and uh, just that you guys are doing marvelous work with that. 
I know the, these RCO grants can be very competitive. If if there's some equivalent, to, if there's some equivalent of like an amicus brief or something that that council could sign on to, if if there was some tiebreaker that we could sign on to to help you, um, we. We, we really truly do need these grants more than most other communities out there and I, I, I don't know that that always telegraphs on paper so if there's anything us or members of the community can do to help just let us know okay thank you thank you great thanks councilmember Hoffmeyer councilmember Stuckey it seems like we've been talking about parks and rec a lot these last few meetings I would say these last few months it kind of has dominated it uh, Although I do, we, I do think we're going to show some love to Chief Slowick here in a little bit. So it's not all Parks and Rec. Um, but part of that comes with creating a new department. I, I mean, we didn't have a Parks and Rec department a year plus ago. So this is all ramping up to a new Parks and Rec department. And our previous Parks and Rec director did a lot of funding through grants. I mean, someone's got to get the grant. Why not us? I, I will say a particular note, the inclusive park, how wonderful that we're taking a tangible step towards that today on what is Autism Awareness Day, April 2nd. Mm. So, Thanks. Just a thought. Councilmember Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Wendy, it, it seems a little premature to me that we're, we're looking for grants for the pickleball courts when we, we just approved the money for the feasibility study. We don't even really know what the end cost is going to be. and, and and we're doubling up. You know, you said there's seven grand opportunities and we, we're going, you know, all in, it seems like, on the pickleball courts. When we have other facilities that, that haven't been maintained or that, that are in need of maintenance, um, there are other opportunities in terms of, of providing access for outdoor athletic facilities. Something that we've talked about before is, is lights at, at like Fort Nugent because once we get into late fall in the winter time th there's there's no place to play because we don't have any lights um and so i was wondering you know you mentioned there were seven opportunities do we not qualify for the other three um and then why are we why doubling up on on the pickleball courts and not going after you know one, a piece of equipment that we've talked about for years is, is in need as an aerator and you know and so <laughs> is there a possibility to, to get some of the some of the equipment that we need to maintain our current fields and make them you know better and, and, and more playable it, it just uh, that that part i guess i'm struggling with is why we're doubling up on that one when we don't even know really what the end cost is going to be and then you know how much more are we going to have to put into this well, we got this grant money and now we we have to you know pull from read or we have to pull from the general fund or we have to pull from from user fees so um, can you speak to that for me, please, and help me explain or help me understand a little bit? Thank you. Sure. So the the three that we're not applying for, um, we don't they don't really fit us. One is a community forest program, um, so they just didn't we didn't have a we didn't have a lane to go down for those three. So we picked these four, um, and with lots of conversation, of course. Um, some are very specific about what you can do um, and what you can't do. And one of the unfortunate things that the majority of these grants you can't do is you can't buy equipment. So then you have to look for other opportunities. Um, and I can't speak for the Parks and Recreation Director. I would refer you to him, but I think the goal of applying for um, both the community outdoor athletic facilities and the youth athletic facilities for pickleball was that the hope that we would get one or the other knowing <clears throat> excuse me that none of this money is going to be available until July 1 2025 so we'll be so far down the path with the planning by then that we will have an idea of what we need um, and this would be like uh, piece number one so I think that was kind of the thought process, but he could probably speak better to that than I could. Okay. Uh, the 10% the local funds, can, can the fundraising be, does that qualify? Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So I, I just want to be clear. I, I, I'm very supportive of the work that you're doing. <laughs> I think you're doing an amazing job and, and you know, I'm not questioning um, Brian sure. at all. I think he's doing an amazing job as well as well as, well as Brandon. And so I, I, I do support this. I just was curious as to, yep. you know, 
why the doubling up and, and why we're doing this before we have the, the study right. done. So but thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Marshall. Anyone else on this matter for the good of the order? All right, hearing nothing, I would entertain it. Yes, nope. Councilmember Stuckey. I was going to oblige that entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve resolution 24 10, authorizing the mayor to sign a Recreation Conservation Office RCO applicant authorization resolution for the COAF, comma, YAF, comma, LWCF, and WWRP recreation grant programs. Second. All right, we have a motion as presented by Councilmember Stuckey. It was seconded by Councilmember Marshall. I would entertain any additional comments or questions on this at this time before we take a vote. Hearing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank have you, Wendy. Thank you, All right, we are going to move on to contract and agreements. It's the bid award, Altfield Water Pump Station Electrical System Replacement. Introducing project manager Brett Arvidson to present the item. Good evening, Council. I'm Brett Arvidson. I'm a project manager for the city, and we're here to talk about the Alt Field Water Pump Station. This is an electri electrical rehabilitation. I guess it'd be a bit of a mouthful there. Alt Field Pump Station is actually our main drinking water feed in the city. All the water coming from Anacortes is then pumped up to our reservoirs. This pump station is, was built in the 1970s, and the electrical system is quite ancient, and it's, got, it's become a critical failure point for us. There's a couple parts in it, if they blow up, they aren't going to we'll be in trouble, so it's something we do need to replace. Here's a picture of the pump station. It is located on the naval base. Uh, we do split our uh, flow off from the Navy at the same location. Uh, here's a picture of the panel, so these these gray boxes here are the electrical panels that we're actually going to replace. And uh, I've been, I'm getting pretty gray haired now these days and these were old when I started my career. <laughs> so anyway, we did uh, prepare bid documents and put the job out for bid. We opened bids on March 19th. We received two bidders. Uh, the low bidder was preferred industrial electrical at $407,306.55. Second bidder is Blue Mountain Electric at $436,000. And our engineer's estimate was $450. Uh, per our uh, policy manual, we are asking for a uh, request to, for a change order percentage of up to, uh, for 20%, which is an amount of $81,461. And this would be, uh, uh, signed by the public works director and we did come up with a recommended motion to move that the city council authorize the mayor to sign the contract for the alt field water pump station electrical rehabilitation project with the low bidder preferred industrial electric incorporated in the amount of four hundred and seven thousand dollars three hundred and six four hundred seven three hundred six dollars and fifty five cents and authorize the public works director to sign changers up to a eighty one thousand four hundred sixty one dollar total Great, thank you, Brett. And with that, I will turn to our city clerk to confirm that we've received no public comment on this matter. That's correct, Mayor. No comments were received. All right, and I will now call upon those present with us this evening to see if there is anyone that would like to step forward and speak on this item. Hearing none, I will turn that over to council for their comments and questions. Council Member Stuckey. Well, I can't say I'm pumped about spending this amount of money. Um, just give me a scenario. This goes down. What's our, what's our backups look like? Uh, we would run out of water and, and we have our reservoirs and a couple of wells which don't pump out very much. This is the main pressurization for our system. So it's a system that we consider a you know, critical <coughs> failure point. Uh, our biggest issue there right now is the fact that the main switch gear is very, very old and uh, main switch gear is uh, can get real cranky and we don't want to touch it because once you exercise it, it may not exercise again. The guys one day had to turn it off one time and they put it back on with a broomstick because uh, they didn't want to touch anything. Uh, again, it's very old. I've had some of these go out and 
Unfortunately, that equipment is not, you just don't go down to the hardware store and buy it. it the, the panels we're buying are 45 weeks out. So it's something we take very seriously. And uh, to me, that's the highest priority in our water system right now. So, I mean, if we kick this can and continue to kick this can, we're, every year we're rolling the dice more and more. Yep. I don't think much more, much would make folks angrier here than uh, not having water. Yeah. <laughs> so. I've had, I've had, historically, I've had a couple of main pump stations go out, and uh, we actually stripped a, a main panel lab, another pump station, and stuck it in there, because the other one we can have turned off. This one we couldn't. Sure. So, uh, again, it's not something I'd really want to be involved with. No, I, I say the only silver lining is we, you know, we had an estimate for 450. We're below that. That's always nice to hear, as opposed to vice versa. So, it, it is what it is. We can't not have water. Yeah. So that's all I have. Thank you, Councilmember Stuckey. Councilmember Hoffmeyer. <clears throat> couple of things real quick you know I uh, remember quite a while back when our public works director mm -hmm. brought our attention to this and mm -hmm. you know uh, he, he painted the picture pretty well yeah it's shocking how old that stuff is um, my question uh, and I guess that this applies to all of our bid processes uh, the low, lowest responsible bidder is 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 part of the vetting process that we we reach out and see how frequently that contractor has had change orders with other entities uh, we have we do uh, we have lowest responsibility generally means we can get a bomb from them they are not disbarred and uh, you know you have proper insurance uh, their change order ratios is not publicly available and so it's not something you really track that much and change order ratio may just be a bad set of plans so again it's not something we have there I'm feeling actually feeling very confident about this one uh, in fact we had two bidders very close to each other is usually a good sign that there was good documents I definitely agree with all that and then my only other question the uh, assuming that there's transformers that are part of this power system are they outside owned by PSE or are yes. they inside so PSC supplies the power to the pump station okay. Uh, we have the, a meter base there, then it goes to the main breaker. Yeah, and I just wonder, yeah. I wonder if that's something to where they maybe will end up upgrade that transformer at the same exact time? Uh, transformers, uh, they have a long life, they and basically they're just wires. Yep. And so if there's an issue with it, they can get a transformer pretty fast, and they also do testing and that kind of stuff on them too. The main breakers are usually your, your favorite point. Perfect. Understood. Well, uh, thank you very much. and. Uh, <coughs> Certainly look forward to this going uh, going down, and uh, we'll all be able to sleep a little better probably. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Hopmeyer. Any other questions or comments for the yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is about the authorization for change orders. Mm -hmm. um, usually, that's kind of more in the ten percent category. That's, that's the policy we've been doing. Is it twenty percent? Yeah. yeah, it's been the policy for almost a year now. So okay. uh, that's. You know, a couple of our projects we've been doing and um, yeah I, I ho certainly hope we don't use that much <laughs> yeah same yeah 20% seemed a little high to me okay thank you mayor pro tem yes councilmember Wigenstein so you as you were explaining this to us this this is this facility used also by the Navy no it's just, uh, just on their land. Yeah, we split at their point. They have their own reservoirs and pump station at that okay. site. Okay. And so they are not participants in this. Yeah, this that's, <laughs> that was my question. I just wanted to kind of make sure. Yeah, that so. was good. I was, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Wigenstein. Anyone else for the good of the order? Yes, Councilmember Hoffmeyer. I move that the City Council authorize the Mayor to sign the contract for Altfield Water Pump Station Electrical Rehabilitation Project with the low bidder Preferred Industrial Electrical Incorporated in the amount of $407,306.55 and authorize the Public Works Director to sign change orders up to $81,461 in total. Second. All right, we have a motion as presented and seconded by Councilmember Marshall. Any other comments or questions on this before I call for a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Brett. 
All right, moving on to the next item, professional <laughs> services agreement with Kimley Horn and Associates Incorporated for climate change and comprehensive plan update services. Introducing, well, I'm here to introduce this tonight as our principal planner, Kak Kamak, to present the item. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council, principal planner here to present a personal services agreement with Kimley Horn and Associates for updating the city's comprehensive plan and also to include a climate change uh, element into the plan. The uh, city applied and received for grants uh, from the Department of Commerce uh, for the comprehensive plan 125,000 and for the climate change 150,000. And this budget allowed us to uh, uh, go out and seek consultant help uh, with this major update because uh, there's a lot of requirements and checks and balances that we have to do and it's good to just get the people that are experienced in it to help us with this process. The, uh, we formed a review committee to look at uh, all the proposals that uh, uh, would come in. We had a couple of members from the council participate in that, uh, on that committee. We had a planning commissioner also participate and several members of the staff. So we received 10 proposals for RFQs we shortlisted those to three for the comprehensive plan and six for the climate change. Three firms had proposed to do both projects, and so, but we held separate interviews, just wanted to give everybody a fair chance and select the best firm that meets our requirements. Out of the entire process, uh, Kim Lee Horn came out on top for both the comprehensive plan and climate change. So uh, they were the top uh, uh, consultant firms. So. Um, we are hoping to get started on that process as soon as uh, possible. Uh, we have uh, a deadline of June of 2025. Could be extended for six months, but we're hoping to get to still shoot for June 25 as a deadline to try and get most of the work done. So the scope of services is attached to the contract that's in your agenda bill. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, uh, we recommend that you move to approve the contract. I have the mayor sign the contract. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Kak. And I will now call upon our city clerk to make sure that we've received no public comment on this issue. That's correct, Mayor. No comments were received. Great, thank you so much. And I will now turn to those who are with us this evening. Is there anyone present that would like to make a comment on this issue? <laughs> Hearing none, I will turn to city council and ask for your comments or questions at this time. Yes, Council Member Stuckey. I see it says the city has budgeted an additional 25,000 if needed. What's the odds that's gonna be needed? Why is that? The scope of our update to the comprehensive plan is not predetermined. Um, and so there could be instances where if we have interest in pursuing some additional work, uh, we could do that. Um, or if the project gets extended, we don't have to uh, worry about whether there's funding to accommodate that. So uh, we just kind of held back about 25000 and uh, had the budget for the consultant contract to be just, you know, 100 and 150 and 125 and just reserve the twenty five as just a buffer. The climate change element, educate me a little bit, is that something that's required by the state? Yes, it is. Okay. Sometimes the climate change can be a hot button issue. So I'm just really reiterating that this is something required by the state. This yes, is not is. something the city of Oak Harbor just decided we need to add to this. No, it is required by the state. And we're happy to get a grant for that because our experience dealing with these kind of planning efforts are minimum. And it's new for the state as well. <coughs> so having experts uh, kind of uh, help us with the process. Uh, would be good. Uh, we'd be surprised, I think, to see how much climate change can influence policies across various elements in the comprehensive plan, transportation, water, sewer, stormwater, all of them have some sort of climate change element uh, impacts. And so how we do that in the comp plan will be interesting, whether we form a separate element and hold policies for that, or whether we spread it along other elements uh, it, and we may have a little bit of both as well. So, uh, yes, 
And, and I too am, am glad that that is being paid for with a grant. Obviously anything we can do to not spend that 25,000 is always appreciated. I understand why it's there, but anything we can do to try to avoid that is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Stuckey. Anyone else that would like to comment or have questions on this issue? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Councilmember Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. Moved to authorize the mayor to sign the contract to hire Kimley Horn LLC as the firm to update the city's comprehensive plan and incorporate climate change into the plan. Second. We have a motion as presented by Councilmember Marshall, seconded by Councilmember Wigenstein. Are there any other questions or comments at this time before I call upon a vote? Yes, Councilmember Hoffmeyer. Just one more, more thing a note here. Um, boy, how, how rare it is to have a funded mandate from Big Brother. Pretty cool. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much, CAC. All right, we're moving right along here, ladies and gentlemen. Other items for consideration. Opioid settlement update. Introducing this will be our Chief of Police, Mr. Tony Slowick. Good evening, Mayor and City Council, Chief Slowick. Get slides going here. So this presentation is there is no action needed. This is an informational uh, presentation. The reason for presenting it tonight is we'll be bringing it to the next city council for action. So tonight we'll be talking about opioid settlement uh, funds, just giving you an update. Um, so uh, just an overview, uh, in 2022, city council signed the One World Opioid Settlement uh, Distribution Agreement. Um, in as you guys can read there, we uh, signed on to the next five settlement agreements for the funds. Uh, 2023, the City Council approved the strategies for reviewing and approving opioid settlement requests. That is actually what we're doing tonight. And then um, in September of 2023, uh, City Council approved um, distributing some of those funds. So this is the fund review and approval process. So I am bringing um, Today, two things to, for consideration uh, for a next meeting uh, on the 16th. Currently, our opioid settlement funds are, are doing well. Uh, the money from the AOC administration allocation, which was budgeted of 10% last year, was not used. That money was put back into the opioid future allocation fund, which was the decision made last year um, uh, for, by city council. So the first item that I'd like to speak about, or actually these are the two items. The first one is the distribution of opioid settlement funds to purchase naloxin for city fleet first aid kits and, uh, and for also police staff. The second item is the Johnson & Johnson settlement agreement. So the naloxin purchase uh, is based off of city staff um, receiving training in February from Island County Human, uh, the health department on opioid and naloxone training, and that was public works, parks, and marina staff. The training covered the proper use of uh, personal protective equipment, also um, suspected opioid materials, how to uh, prevent and to, how to use naloxone uh, to counter opioid exposure or how to use it to help as a first aid tool on either a coworker or a, a person that you were observing having an overdose. Uh, city staff at that time identified the need to outfit city fleet vehicles or city fleet, which also includes lawnmowers, tractors, all of those other equipment rental items with naloxin uh, for each first aid kit. And there currently is not an inventory of naloxin, um, or we also know this is Narcan, um, owned by the city, and we cannot get this from Island County Health Department. So the item that will be brought forward um, next city council meeting will be requesting a distribution of $5,500 from the opioid future allocation fund to purchase 100 boxes of naloxone. Um, and it's a, uh, after tax and everything, it's about $5,500 is what that would purchase would include. The second item that I'd like to talk about is the Johnson & Johnson opioid settlement. 
Um, so that opioid settlement was uh, reached in January of 2024. Um, as part of that is the city needs to be part of the One World MOU, which we are. Um, the total settlement is 149.5 million for the state of Washington, breaks it into half for the state and half for the cities and counties. Our allotment that we will receive will be approximately $1.2 million. That'll be a one lump sum um, amount that'll be distributed to us. So once, um, uh, if the city council agrees, uh, participation form is due by May 11th. Uh, there are the same use and restrictions as in the One World um, MOU that we have with all the other settlement funds. And um, the distribution is the same calculation as all the other settlement agreements. And again, payment is in full in 2024. So that is my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. With that, I will call upon Council for questions or comments. Yes, Councilmember Hoffmeyer. Yep. Real, real quick, and I think this is I think this is on topic uh, with regards to the Narcan going in the fleet vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this winter, during that cold spell, my asthma was really acting up, and my uh, my albuterol inhaler froze in the car. What do I do? Uh, how do you how do you keep the Narcan from freezing? And I ask because I have some in my glove box, and I don't know. <laughs> So I'll, I'll say this, that we've had, uh, police department has been using uh, Narcan in the field for at least three years now. Uh, we did receive that from different grants that are no longer available to us. Um, we haven't had any freezing issues with those Narcan uh, that officers either carry on their person or have in uh, the first aid kits in the police cars. Awesome, yeah, maybe it's got, maybe it's got alcohol or something in it. That's awesome maybe. though, cool, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I'm a little confused on the Narcan. Um, so we've had it in the past, but we don't currently have it? Yeah. So currently, the only two agency or departments in the city that have Narcan available to them are the police department and the fire department. Uh, police department, again, has been carrying it for about three years. There had been state grants where we could get it from the University of Washington or other locations. Since Washington State has signed into the opioid settlement agreements, those grants are no longer available to law enforcement, and they're pushing law enforcement to use their opioid settlement funds. Additionally, when tr uh, staff received tra training from the health department, the health department said that they were not going to be providing um, every box of Narcan for us. They provided 10 boxes uh, during the training. It's sad to say, but we've got to have that, and we've got to have that training. Yeah. It's, it's too bad that we, that's the case, but by all means, we definitely have to have this. Thank you, Council Member Stuckey. Anyone else for the good of the order on this issue? All right, hearing none, we'll move to the last issue on the agenda, law enforcement, mental health, and wellness grants. And introducing that is Chief Slowick again. Okay, good evening, Council. Um, what I'm gonna talk about are the, there are two law enforcement is there another slide PowerPoint? Okay, we'll use this one. All right, so there are two law enforcement. Um, no, there's actually another one that didn't say Department of Justice. I think it just says Wellness. But we can use that one. I mean, that's, that's fine. So this uh, presentation is not for action either. Uh, this information will be brought forward to our next city council meeting as well. Um, that's fine, Tim, that's fine. We can use this, yeah. So the, there are two law enforcement, mental health and wellness grants that, are, um, that just became open. They're both due by um, the beginning of May. And so that's why I'm bringing it forward to city council. Uh, the first one is the, um, Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Grant, or LEMHWA, which is Department of Justice. That is a COPS grant program. Um, the, this grant provides officer uh, psychological health and well-being, resources and mental health, provides um, for issuing of common uh, resources for mental health for uh, common law enforcement officers. So that, for us, is called commissioned officers. So certified police officers that have gone to the police academy. Um, it also provides other resources. Um, those items include so
So uh, those items include peer support training, uh, family resources, suicide prevention. Um, the other grant that is not on your slide is the Washington State um, Criminal Justice Wellness Grant. It actually covers the same amount of information or the same items. Uh, that is a state grant, and that um, grant provides wellness services um, uh, to the police department as well. So both grants are grants that need to be applied for as a larger region. So in 2023, Burlington Police Department applied for a grant uh, from both the state and Department of Justice uh, and received the state grant. Um, all the agencies that are on the uh, screen there are agencies that are re currently receiving the grant services. It's for coaching services that we um, currently have for uh, police officers. Um, we are looking at expanding um, this grant service to include mentoring and peer support uh, services as well and also to expand that beyond just the commissioned officers, but also to non-commissioned non officers at the police department or non-commissioned employees, and also to family members. Again, the grant uh, includes the Im implementation of the project, the delivery of the project, um, and there is no matching funds for either of the grants. So again, coach, uh, the proposal for the police department is to do coaching and mentoring services, in-person training, wellness options, peer support training, um, a certification program for our peer support staff who are on our peer support team uh, to be certified as uh, coaches or mentors and also to expand to um, non-commissioned and spouses. Um, and with that, I have answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Chief. And with that, I will turn it over to Council for questions or comments. Hearing, oh, yes, Councilmember Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Um, if, if this is going to be an action item at our next meeting, does that give you enough time still to, to get the grants filled out and, and prepared for the 1st of May? It does. That's why we're presenting it okay. today, and, and, and we skipped a workshop. Right. We, we were unable to get it through because uh, things opened up late for the last workshop meeting. Okay. Just want to so, make sure. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, any other questions or comments on this issue? Okay, thank you. No. Hearing none, thanks, Chief. <laughs> All right, there being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? I motion we adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn, seconded. All in favor, raise your hands. So moved, we're adjourned.